This week in 1964, the first episode of Homicide went to air. It's a holdup. The first scene from the first show, as it was watched by Melbourne viewers on the night of Tuesday, October the 20th, 1964. Well, that was 50 years ago, and the series went on to be one of the most significant Australian television shows ever produced. Remember this opener? I'm Daniel McPherson, and I was lucky enough to be part of City Homicide only a few years ago. That was a gritty cop drama inspired by the original Homicide series. And tonight, Seven celebrates the 50-year anniversary of Homicide. And decades on, people still have fond memories of Homicide, and the theme music itself became just as iconic as the show. And it's still one of the most instantly recognisable television themes ever. I can't remember how many discs I tried before I found that piece of music. It ran for three minutes, so I had to cut it down to 30 seconds. And there was the homicide theme. Little did I know that this theme would still be played 50 years on in radio quizzes and trivia nights. Throughout the time Homicide was on air, it won numerous awards. Multiple Logies for Best Drama Series, Orgies for the Scripts, and Penguins and Sammies for its directors and actors. It had record-breaking ratings, and in times when our screens were dominated by foreign imports, Homicide was being sold to the UK, unheard of in the 1960s. For all of these reasons, as well as for inspiring a run of police shows to follow it, Homicide remains one of the most important and significant programs in the history of Australian television. Homicide became the longest running Australian drama ever, uh, with 510 episodes being made before its demise in 1977. At first, people said it would never work because it was Australian. But ultimately, it was because it was very Australian that its success was assured. For the first time, Australians were able to see on their own television screens their own people, and it was identifiably Australian. That really had never happened before. And if it hadn't have been shot in Melbourne, where the Melbourne people could recognise their streets, then I'm, I'm pretty sure it would never have lasted. Homicide created action sequences that wowed audiences of the day. By modern standards, these were simple stunts, but as the late Leonard Teal explains, there was still plenty of danger involved. An unusual accident happened in the centre of death, episode seven of Homicide. In the climax of the show, police dogs led the detectives to the murderer's hideout. For these next shots, one of the police dog handlers stood in for actor Keith Burney. Even the handler had thick padding under his sleeve. The Doberman attacked, missed its grip on the arm, and ripped a deep wound in the policeman's leg. In those early days, no one took more risks than our stuntmen. Actor Don Crosby starts to climb a ladder. Then we swing in stuntman Mick Ryan. And move Don back for this convincing pose. In the long list of scenes that went wrong, this one almost ended in tragedy. On a Geelong highway, a young psychopath with a grudge against the police. Let's go back and see how that motorbike crash was staged. In the first shot, stuntman John Armstrong synchronizes his move with the car and swings off the road. For the second shot, a dummy is mounted on a bike and tipped from the roof rack of a speeding station wagon. But the bike bounces farther than planned and misses cameraman Alan Arnold by inches as the director drags him back. Homicide episode 266, The Lawrences, final mix scene A. Eh? The production of Homicide was a large technical undertaking using state-of-the-art equipment of the day. It was created with a big team on a very lean budget. As a matter of fact, the early episodes of Homicide, the budget for them, and it was, what, about uh, 47 minutes altogether, and the budget for that 47 minutes 
was the same as a 30 second Coca-Cola commercial. And people <laughs> used to say, quite rightly, <laughs> that when you went from one office to the other in Homicide and you shut the door, the wall shook. Well, yes, it did. Um, because the, the flats were in fact timber with uh, canvas over them. It was, we would have been about three to four years in before they were actually constructed of plywood. Right from day one, Homicide had unprecedented cooperation from the Victoria Police, who provided remarkable assistance in presenting an accurate image of police work. And Chief Commissioner Porter supported Crawford's endeavours. We can be sure that Crawford Productions will produce an accurate and fair portrayal of your average policeman and your average detective. We can also be sure that episodes will be true to life and not highlighted with sensation. The Victoria Police were fantastic right from the beginning. They gave us uh, real police to act as extras in our shows, provided cars, of course, uh, their own police cars for us to use, and we used them a lot. Get back! If you think I need a breeze, Jack, send for one, will you? Might be wise, Frank. Well, one of our detectives had to be killed in the show, and uh, he had to have a proper police funeral. So what did the Victoria Police do? They put the whole thing on, a total, you know, real police funeral on for us. Homicide often based stories around real-life cases, such as the murder of a young police constable, which prompted a very appreciative letter to the producers from the victim's family. The parents of the murdered policeman watched this episode and they wrote us this letter. We regarded the program as a fine tribute to our son's courage and devotion to duty. Thank you most sincerely. Nor was it afraid to confront issues that were not discussed in public the way they are today. Issues such as rape and domestic violence. Dad, don't! Please, don't! <laughs> Why do you always fight? You might just have noticed a young Sigrid Thornton in that last scene. And throughout its amazing run on air, Homicide had the single most impressive lineup of actors ever seen on Australian TV, such as Jill Perryman, Shane Porteous, Tommy Dysart, Pamela Stevenson, Stuart Wagstaff, Jackie Weaver, Kim Gingell, Roger Clemson, Wendy Hughes, Rosie Sturgis, Gary McDonald, Colleen Hewitt, Carmen Duncan, Tony Bonner, Jack Thompson, Henry Zepps, Bill Hunter, John Mellion, Max Cullen, John Wood, Nolan Brown, Sandy Gore, Terry Donovan, Ian Turpey, Maury Fields, Val Jolay, Gus Mercurio and Lorraine Bailey, to name just a few. Throughout the series, Homicide featured 15 leading detectives. Lex Mitchell, Terry McDermott, Jack Fagan, Les Damon, Lionel Long, Norman Yem, Mike Preston, George Malaby, Leonard Teal, Alwyn Kurtz, Gary Day, John Stanton, Don Barker, and Dennis Grosvenor. And of course, another great Australian actor recruited for the show was Charles Bud Tingwell. When the time came to look for a new inspector, our first choice was Bud Tingwell, who was enjoying a highly successful career in Britain. The big thing was that at long last, I was doing a film series, that is, working in film all the time. That was my proper job for the three years I was doing Homicide. And uh, there were a lot of us actors who, for years, had dreamt of doing that, working in film in Australia. Wonderful. As Homicide's popularity grew, it also gained a young audience who still remember the problems associated with watching the show. Initially, my parents uh, wouldn't let me watch Homicide, but uh, I could hear the slamming of the car doors on the police car uh, in my bedroom, so I knew the show was on. Later on, I was allowed to watch the show, and they were all fantastic actors, and uh, that's a strong memory I have of Homicide. I love the show. I watched Homicide very rarely when Mum and Dad would let me. They loved watching it, but they thought it was a little too violent for me. What I remember most about Homicide was the, the music at the beginning, and that really signalled for my parents to send us to bed. 
and uh, we always wanted to stay up and watch, and often we'd watch it through the crack in the door. Homicide was created by Crawford Productions, who still to this day have had the most significant influence in Australian drama. It was also a training ground for many of those leading the industry today. Founder Hector Crawford was able to encapsulate the appeal of homicide in his own words. Now, lots of people say, you know, why? How did all this happen? How did this program win through and be quite such a sort of a historic mark in, in the television history? Well, there are all sorts of theories. My own theory was that the public were asking loud and clear for Australian produced drama and homicide was just that. Now sit back and enjoy one of the all-time great episodes as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of Homicide.